everyone. I am Melissa Forziat of Take the Donut, here to help you get inspiration and get donuts. I'm a motivational keynote speaker, but today I'm bringing you another Take the Donut interview with Angie and Garth London. Let me tell you a little bit about them. So Angie and Garth London are the owners of Fakago Lodge, an award-winning bed and breakfast in Taupo, New Zealand. And, uh, you know, it was some time ago that I last saw you, but it's great to see you again. Thank you both for being on today. Real pleasure Thanks. to be here. Yep. Great to see you again. Well, you know, I'm going to start with the obligatory question, but culturally speaking, you are the first interviewees from outside of the U.S. So normally I would say, what's your favorite donut? But I don't remember seeing a lot of donuts in New Zealand. So I'll um, expand that to what's your favorite dessert? Oh, that's a good question. Um, we do have donuts in New Zealand, but possibly not the range that you have in the US. Um, and we've got a great little store uh, that's opened up called the Donut Box in Topo here. So that's great. Um, so my, my favorite dessert's probably, it's winter here at the moment, so it's probably apple crumble. Mm -hmm. And they have an apple crumble donut with a little tiny French apple on top. So that's probably covering both those, best dessert, best donut. And the thing about Kiwi donuts is they're really different to your ones, which are like, you know, they got the hole in the middle. So our donuts sort of might not have the hole in the middle. So we got some that look like a ball, right? And they give you a little syringe with some nice, sweet, sticky stuff in it. You know, and it could be like a vanilla custard or a chocolate. And and you poke it into the donut and you give it a squirt. <laughs> you okay? get to fill them and yourselves? You fill them yourself. Wow. And they... <laughs> <laughs> they are really good, you know. But but I, I'm a real I, I'm a real simple. You, you know, you'll get this one. Hey, my I'm a coffee freak. So uh, for me, it's got to be affogato. <laughs> I okay. love affogato. You know. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. I love I love that you just uh, taught me a little bit about experiential treats in New Zealand. I like the idea of like filling your own desserts it feels like the experience would make it better for some reason but yeah and it, it definitely does so yeah it sure does well I said a little bit very little bit about your your bio up the top but I tell us more about yourselves you know there's two of you so what do you want us to know about Angie and Garth London we 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 both um we're corporate folk, you know, um, in our careers. This was sort of a, um, you know, a, a late in life type um, activity, career move for us. And stepping outside your uh, your comfy salary, you know, in your corporate career is a real take the donut moment, I can tell you. It, it, but you know what? It was about um, it was about us spending time together. You know, um, it was about uh, our values as opposed to having to live um, other people's values. And not that those values were bad, but they were different to our values, you know? Um, and, and there was also um, that I have a very serious hearing disability and that was becoming more challenging um, in the corporate world um, because I was in a communications role so um, this being able to do this was um, enabled us to we can manage the environment better and um, and you generally in very small groups in a quiet environment so um, yeah so that was a consideration yeah, we, we, what should we do next yeah and, and my background so I, I trained as an engineer and we and you go engineering and hospitality. How does that work, right? But it's it's about it's about the person at the end of the day and what they like. And we're very much uh, we're, we're greenies, you know. Um, we're uh, we're into the outdoors. We like hiking, biking, and uh, all things out climbing. You know, alpine climbing. And, not me <laughs> yeah and 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 doing what we're doing sort of enabled us to get a little closer to that yeah 
Perfect. Well, you mentioned the theme of this talk uh, as you were answering that. So we're having a Take the Donut interview. And for those who aren't familiar with that, Take the Donut for me is an expression that basically means carpe diem. For those who haven't heard this story, I'll link a video here. But basically, I left a donut on a table once in college, and it became an actual object lesson for me and what it looks like to leave opportunity on the table. So now it's about taking the donut and not leaving those opportunities behind. So today's conversation here is just, what does it look like to go after opportunity? So I wanted to start by asking you, when you think about this idea of seizing opportunities, how are you with going after your own goals? What is that process like for you? Okay, um, I'll talk first. <laughs> we're, we're, we're both quite, um, quite driven people. Um, we're both uh, certainly goal-oriented people, and we have been throughout our uh, throughout our lives, our working careers, and and it, it it goes beyond working careers to even our recreation, you know, and what we've done, you know, what we've done to try and look after ourselves. Um, uh, so Angie's a, a a detail person, and that is a really um, a really cool skill to have when you're in um, uh, when when you're doing what we're doing, and uh, and I can do that, but I probably tend to, I, I probably over the years tended to the other side, um, you know, the bigger picture side, and uh, and um, and I have to come back to do the detail stuff, but you know, it's 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 just. It's it's about playing to our strengths. Um, yeah, what would you like to say? Oh, yeah, you've probably covered both of us actually, which is great. But um, yeah, um, the seizing the donut. Um, yeah, um, it's about just yeah, um, understanding your strengths, but then having the I suppose the um, drive or the um, just give it a go type attitude to just, um, yeah. yeah. No regrets, eh? Yeah, you, you know, it's it's funny, like, um, uh, we're both quite conservative, um, I would say, economically, financially. Um, so despite my risk taking, say, on a mountain, which is which is a little different in the, you, you know, so I take risks and they're quite big risks, or I have done, and but economically we're quite conservative, and and so you, you know before we jumped into this, we did a bit of homework, okay, and that was the first step. So often on a journey, you got to go, well, what might my first step look for, and it might just be just a little bit of homework, a little bit of, and that's the hardest thing, you know, taking that first step. Mm. But I would, I, I wish I'd done it honestly twenty years ago. I wish I'd done it. 10 years before we did. Mm. So, and isn't it funny go. how your comfort, you know, your uh we can be more into the idea of risk in some zones of our our lives but not others. You know, it's almost compartmentalized where you're there's mm. certain things that you almost feel more comfortable to be uncomfortable than others. Um <laughs> so it's funny that you're finding that or that you have found that in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Um you know, when you when you're raised in a in a in a working New Zealand family, you know, who whose parents went through the depression. In my case, you know, it, it leaves you with certain values, and and we're old enough to remember 1987, and we're certainly, obviously, uh, you, you know, all familiar with um, the GFC, and and so those those financial those little moments they create a little discomfort. And they and they did for most people, I think, and some more than others. But you know, out of those can come opportunity, and and that's what the GFC is ultimately actually what 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 sort of sparked us, I suppose, to think about doing different stuff. You know, it was around that time and post that time that we started thinking about this, yeah. and it didn't happen overnight. You know, it took some time um, to to get from we would love to do this to actually finding uh, you know doing the research and finding a property and um and then doing all the things to get the business going it took time but you know what man looking back 
um, loved every moment of it. Well, as you say that, you know, obviously you said taking the first step is the tough part, but then there are many, many steps along the way. So what keeps you motivated while you're going through the somewhat lengthy to-do list of a big goal? What keeps us motivated? So mm -hmm. we, we, we both, I said earlier, we're both quite driven and I think we always want to be the best we can. Um, doing what we're doing and um we get a lot of um energy from people too so we're both um quite extrovert although I'm slightly less when when with my hearing loss but but I think if you enjoy people um this is like one of the perfect jobs to be in because you know every day we've got people coming to stay and they're from amazing parts of the world um or other parts of New Zealand and they share stories with us and we share ours and you get a whole perspective on on the world and um and which is a good perspective eh? it's quite, a, you yeah. know so I suppose we enjoy what we do so that's motivating in itself um and we like to achieve the things that we set out to do so those two things probably keep us motivated yeah great yeah it's not hard <laughs> Well, when you think about historically for you, this with this goal or any goal you've set out to achieve, are there particular types of challenges that are your Achilles heel? Like, you know, a, a brand of challenge that you just seem to encounter every time you you go after a new goal? Uh, there's one that always comes to mind with me, eh? and um, it's becoming a bigger and bigger issue. And I don't know what it's like in the US. I guess you're a bit the same. Um, it's it's dealing with uh, the, in, the change actually, and in a word, it's it's about dealing with change. You know, it's about societal change that is happening, and uh, humans are not we are uh, not comfortable with change normally. Um, very few of us actually go you know, change everything. You know, and and you know, or, or tell me tell me how you want things to change you know we don't do that we actually naturally like to stay within our comfort zone to use you know to use an old saying and 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 yeah that changes that change has been I think um huge post COVID um it happened post GFC but uh, we've just been through one of the most challenging times in a hundred years and and the changes that that has imposed have been huge. And then there have been other things that have happened parallel with that that are continuing to impose changes on the way we do, the way we have to do business. You know, technology. You know, um, mm -hmm. wow, it's it's evolving. Evolving is the wrong word. It's actually it's actually happening really fast and really big. I think. One of the other things in a business sense too, because that's a really big macro thing, and I agree with you, Gus, but um, when I think back to when we were first taking the donut of actually um, building a Kobo Lodge um, in the terms of it as a business and an opportunity for us, the biggest challenge, um, which still continues at times for a lot of people, is access to capital. You know, when you have this amazing idea and you're really successful at what you're doing you want to build maybe a slightly bigger donut or you know slightly more evolved and it's a really big challenge we've and and um and I I suspect lots of businesses have that you know with you know they've got some great ideas and and uh but they can't you know bringing it to fruition if you're trying to rely on just doing it from your own cash flow is um challenging our banks here are particularly uh, conservative even before COVID with tourism businesses and they're even more uh, conservative about um, tourism businesses post uh, pandemic. So um, that's always a challenge. We yeah. have some solutions to it, but we can. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, on that, on that, I, I think it depends, you know, how big you want your donut to be. Right. But um you know, talk to people who you think may be able to help enlighten 
you know, use your network, use your friends. And I don't mean that in a negative sense. I mean, have some really, because it can be amazing what comes out of conversations with people. Absolutely. I just found myself smiling during that answer because very on brand, Garth answered with this huge, like change is the hardest thing, this huge idea of change. And Angie comes in <laughs> with access to capital, which is so detailed. So I just love yeah. <laughs> it. a reflection of us two as we are, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was absolutely perfect. Well, I want to ask you this. I mean, we've been sort of talking about one big change, one big donut that you've taken. But when you think back across your lives, if I said, what's the biggest donut that you've taken? What is it? Is it starting this business and moving out of your corporate jobs or is it something else? This would be up there. I, I, I think this would be the biggest um, because it was yeah. such a, um, it was a change in all things. It was moving to a different um, place in New Zealand. It was leaving the corporate um, reliable um you know, salaries and and a couple of you know great jobs and secured and um and it was doing something completely different to maybe what we thought we had the skill set for, which actually turned out that we did have quite a lot of the skill sets needed. So, um, I think if we're thinking of you know all of those challenges, um, unknowns, um, this you know creating this from scratch because it wasn't an existing business. The the property was here, the buildings were here, but uh, not, it wasn't um, a, a boutique lodge, bed and breakfast at that stage. So this would, um, yeah, I'd say this is the biggest thing we've ever done in those terms. Yeah, it was the biggest leap of faith. <laughs> mm. But there are, there, there, you know, we've been married for 40 years. I'm giving a bit away here, okay. And um, we, we've had lots of uh, donut moments in our lives, you know. I mean, hang on, going back. Maybe my biggest donut was actually saying, I want to marry Angie, you know, and do you want to marry me? Um, you know, on the personal, and there have been lots of those personal ones, but but then you know, along the career path, it could be, shall I take this promotion? It means moving 700 kilometers away from our family, you know. Mm -hmm. And can I even do that job? Or can I even run a um, you, you know, a hospitality business in, in the tourism market and um, and having confidence to do that. And that's a word I throw in and deliberately because I think a lot of people might question, you know, and lack confidence. And I think if you really think about your skill set and how you might be able to fill some gaps if you've if you've identified some gaps, then I think you can help build confidence and it helps take that first step or those first steps to, uh, you know, to take the donut. Confidence is always a trick, right? How can we be confident if we've never done something before? That doesn't seem possible. Mm. So we have to find a way to get there somehow. And uh, sometimes it's, you know, you build the confidence along the way. And, and you know, I've made... Uh, career decisions in the past that haven't gone the way I hoped they would. Um, having said that, I don't regret doing it because if I hadn't done it, I wouldn't know, would I? You know, so um, if if you don't make mistakes uh, and learn from your mistakes, how do you know w w whether that might have become one of the biggest things in your life or whether it's a mistake, you know? And then just have a little plan B lined up and be prepared to change. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, if, if you're thinking, of, you know, about right now, what donuts are you trying to take in this moment? Or is there anything in particular that feels like a goal you want to achieve? So um, we've kind of had something come out of left field that we weren't expecting to happen and that um, we have this beautiful property near the lake um, before, and it's it was part of our own environment court case. Uh, 20 odd years ago, protecting it from an um, uh, you know, intensive subdivision development um, because it, it's right across from um, the lake reserve. So it's beautiful. But um, so never expecting we'd be able to subdivide our 10 acres. Um, but the local council has um, created a new zone that would mean that we can um, break up the property into two five acre blocks and still fall within this environment court ruling. 
So that's creating opportunities for us to think about whether we want to take these donuts that are coming because it was possibly always a little bit big, the land that we have, and we've always wanted to do some things with the lodge. Um, it's a very small boutique lodge B&B, but we've always thought like one extra suite would be perfect or a glamping suite in our beautiful trade area. Or, And I think, as I mentioned earlier about access to capital, this creates our own capital that we can reinvest in this business and property. And we've thought about it and, we, and it's probably the best place for us to invest in, um, you know. Um, so that's our big donut coming up. We'll know more come August when the um, council have a hearing just to make sure that their new zoning is going to go through. Yeah. So for now yeah, you get to big... dream big and you wait for the yeah. ruling. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like a little owner's cottage is an idea on the property because we've got quite a lot of nice space and gardens and things. So, yeah. Lots, you know, things to make our life a little easier, things which help us when we're looking forward to um, as we get older, um, you know, and we maybe don't want to intensively host, um, we can give lots of options with the business about how we um, still uh, have guests and uh, and how we run our business, yeah. Yeah, it's so we run, you know, the, the, the bit of land that Angie's talking about, is we run it as a farm. So in the bit, so, so we would be able to keep the 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 high, you know, the arboretum actually. We've got an arboretum here. And, and so it's got thousands of trees and um different species of trees. And in, in fact, the little plug, we're a carbon neutral business. So we're a climate positive carbon neutral tourism business, hospitality business. And and so, you, you know, the, the beauty of the development opportunity is it doesn't take take away that. It just reduces potentially our workload at a time in our lives when we need to really start thinking about that. You know, um, we, we've post-COVID, uh, you, you know, we've actually been really busy, Melissa, and, um, you know, we, we've had a good run. We've been lucky. And... Um, and we sometimes we get to the end of a period and we'll go, why does it seem so much harder now? And it does, you know, and it's a lot of the things that we've talked about in this meeting, but also it's that we're 10 years older than we were when we started, you know, and and you do have to start thinking about, yeah, you, you know, you, you've always got to what, be yeah, thinking shape, a little bit ahead. Yeah, a little yeah, bit ahead. Lifestyle you know? will be um, as we go uh, along, yeah. Yeah. But Absolutely. I don't want to stop doing it. We, we love doing it, you know. It's the it's the energy you get from people. So. Yeah, you just have to think yeah. smart about where it's headed. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's go to the sprinkle some encouragement section. There could be people who are listening to this interview who are trying to take a donut of their own and they're not sure what to do about it. And what advice or what recommendations would you give to those people? No, first up, no regrets. You know, don't don't leave yourself in a situation where a few years down the track, you might be asking yourself, or imagining that you're asking yourself, "Wish I'd done that." Woulda, shoulda, coulda. All of those things, you know. Um, but we've sort of already talked about it a little bit. It's like do a little bit of homework. Mm. understand yourself as well I think it's really important to understand yourself and the homework will be a little bit on yourself and your strengths and weaknesses and a little bit on the donut what yeah a little bit on the donut you know and 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 just work out uh how you can take that step and taking that first step the first step is always the hardest but it's it it that it's the first step of a journey and we don't necessarily even understand where that journey might take us, but but you can make it up as you go too, <laughs> you know. And and it and it will change, and things will force it to change. So yeah, don't be don't be scared. Try and lose the lose the fear, and um, do it anyway. And, and <laughs> give yourself do some stuff to give yourself some confidence, and do it anyway. That's what <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. That's 
Yeah. And the make it up as you go philosophy, I think is so true because there's never really a roadmap for anything we do. Yeah. Yeah. Flex yeah. A little bit of flexibility, I think. Because you won't know everything this does. Yeah. If it's something that's outside of what you've always done, which I suppose is what the whole idea of, you know, just grabbing something because it's an opportunity. Um, so you're not going to have all the answers at once. And one thing we did that I think was really good is we realised we were pretty confident in lots of things about our strengths to, to bring to this opportunity here, but we didn't have any experience in tourism. So we aligned ourselves for our website development for both businesses with a very, very good tourism marketing company in New Zealand called Tomahawk. And they have an American director, actually, but she lives in New Zealand, and Gina. And Gina Janine Palladini. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> Shout out to Gina. She, she was so helpful in and because we'd done all this business planning and she said so where are you guys in this business plan and we we're like oh no one's going to come to see us here you know so it's all about the building and the lake and, the, uh, and she said oh no it's a bed and breakfast that's hosted it's about you guys so you need to be in the plan so there was lots of good advice that we we got from people who did know about that particular donut which was tourism that we didn't know about so um, yeah, that would be a little sprinkle to suggest is that, you know, find maybe some people that do know about. Can fill the holes. Yeah. Can fill the hole in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. We use the pun as much as we can around here. That's it. <laughs> so tell us where we can find you, you know, for those who are interested to maybe stay at your lodge or see any of the other things that you're working on. I'll put links in the description, but where can we find you? We're online, okay. Yeah, so the, the we're website. online in lots of places. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so what you did? Web, so our website, you know, which you'll put the link up for, because no one will figure out how to how to spell this, but it's called Fakaipo Lodge, and in Maori, yeah. the F is is a W H, okay. So Fakaipo, okay, Lodge It's always .co.nz in New Zealand, pretty much. Yeah. If you've been around for a while, anyway. But we, we've got a Facebook presence, we've got an Instagram presence, and um, and we've got a yeah, we've got quite a few followers. So just hunt, hunt us out. Look for Garth and Angie in Topo. It'll come up if you Google Garth and Angie Topo New Zealand. It'll come up. <laughs> oh wow, that's fantastic! And I'm so glad we got a chance to get a little bit of that New Zealand culture in here because the WH sounding like a F is one of my favorite things about the Maori language. <laughs> you about uh, that, right? it's like... And it really trips a lot of people up, but it's so easy. Yeah, yeah, you just yeah. just need to know the rule. It's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, everybody, That's make sure that you check out all of those resources. Like I said, we put those links in the description for you to check those out and find Garth and Angie and Topo. And uh, if you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe because we're going to have a lot of great interviews coming up with others who are taking the donut as well. But Angie and Garth, thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Melissa. We really enjoyed it. A lot of fun. All right. Okay, okay. everybody, you know what to do. Get inspiration, get donuts. Bye.